The following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. looking at is actually a cell phone tower. Many communities have decided that this is easier on the eyes than one of these. Yeah. President of Larson Camouflage, a company that builds cell phone towers in a wide variety of disguises, from palm trees to water towers to flagpoles. Cell antennas are also being hidden inside all kinds of architecture, like clock towers and fake chimneys. And every antenna comes with electrical equipment, which also must be hidden. In this Colorado site, it's encased in a man-made boulder. And in Arlington, Virginia, this house has the neighborhood fooled. Door-to-door -door salesmen visit this house. Free newspapers are dropped off at this house. John Johnson works for Verizon Wireless, which built a house where no one is ever home. The inside is filled with the equipment needed to operate a traditional tower that sits in the backyard. Why do you have really a very nice looking house as a housing for electronics well if you look around this is a very nice neighborhood we wanted to be able to blend into the neighborhood but disguises are expensive a tree like this can cost as much as one hundred and twenty thousand dollars four times the price of a metal tower it is a source of revenue that can be extremely beneficial the church makes $72,000 a year by leasing its steeple to Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. The money used in church ministries. Christ taught us to be wise about the, the talents that we have and to use them for the benefit of the kingdom. And it's happening at churches both across New England and nationwide. There's so much demand for steeple space, it's even spawned a new company that markets church steeples and negotiates contracts with carriers. People ask me what I do for a living. I say, I spend my day just funneling millions of dollars into the kingdom of God. And everybody chuckles, but I say, no, that's what we do. Churches profiting not by spreading the word, but by transmitting words. The uh, human mind is subject to uh, being affected by uh, radio frequency energy, and that's what this device is. In other words, you can move the moods of large populations using this kind of technology. So now we have not just maniacs in the Pentagon, but a bunch of Dr. Strangeloves? Pretty weird stuff. But scientists have been experimenting with radio frequencies on animals' brains for decades. And the military has followed it all very closely, especially once it found out the Russians were onto it. It was all kept a deep, dark secret by the two superpowers. Back in the 60s, the Soviets began zapping the American embassy in Moscow with a low-frequency beam. No one knows for sure what they were up to, but one theory is that they were trying to mess with people's central nervous systems. And one report did say the diplomats got depressed a lot. And hey, just think of all the nifty applications against the enemy. Why blow people up when you can drive them crazy? From uh, documents dating back into the early 80s, we see that the military had discussed uh, the possibilities of mind control through uh, radio frequency energy. Uh, the possibility is there. The military has studied it. A 1982 Air Force report called radio frequency energy a major new research initiative and said that RF can, quote, disrupt normal purposeful behavior. A 1987 military report called for more research on RF energy as a non-lethal weapon, while pointing out that most of the existing technology is classified. And sure enough, in 1993, there was a big conference at John Hopkins University. 
Here, the entire conference was classified. But the agenda wasn't, and weapons using extremely low radio frequencies, or ELFs, were listed as a very attractive option. Is it just a coincidence that there's been all of this talk and that HARP will be experimenting with, with this? Is that all just coincidence? I believe the, uh, the ability of ELF to affect the mind is, is a, uh, a side issue for us. It may be real. I can't say. It's been exceedingly difficult to find information on what is supposed to be a major new initiative of the military. All we see is HARP. Well, then I'm being kept in the dark, if that's the case. This document from Maxwell Air Force Base lays out um, the use of electromagnetic weapons technologies for debilitating human beings. Using electromagnetic warfare against human beings, you can cause disease, you can cause hysteria, or you can cause passivity for population control. Extremely low frequencies affect us because they are the same frequencies that our brains output. And when they're in the environment around us, our brains try to entrain to them. So our brains try to mimic those signals. And if those signals are not uh, good ones for our behavior, then we can fall apart. We can behave differently. We could get sick. We could feel very stressed and not we know could ever why. learn how to electronically stroke the, the ionosphere, this layer that begins about 30 miles above the Earth's surface that's electrically charged. If we could ever figure out how to electronically stroke it, he said, to get it to send a signal back to the Earth, we could affect uh, the behavior of people over huge geographic areas on a hemispheric basis. And it wouldn't affect everyone. It would affect 70 or 80 percent of the population is what they more or less figured. But this was a technology that didn't exist in 1969. In the early 70s, Zbigniew Brzezinski referenced J.F. Gordon's work and said, you know, this is a technology that will likely emerge. Zbigniew Brzezinski predicted back in 1970, he said they will be a highly internationalist elite with a globalist outlook. He indicated that their technotronic society would exploit the latest communication techniques to manipulate emotions and control reason. He observed human beings becoming increasingly manipulable and malleable. You can induce virtually any effect that a chemical can cause in a living system with a, um, an external, primarily extremely low frequency magnetic field. The ultimate weapon in the info war would be so secret, so invisible, so undetectable, you would never know your mind was under attack. Dr. Michael Persinger is a professor of psychology and neuroscience. Dr. Persinger's research focuses on brain trauma. And he uses carefully controlled doses of electromagnetic radiation to induce relaxation and alleviate pain. So uh, what Sandra did was to initiate a opiate releasing pattern. That's a burst firing field that um, is stimulated once every four seconds and that produces relaxation and a very pleasant sensation. Uh, similarly, using the appropriate field, we can induce fear and apprehension, but clearly there would be an ethical in that setting. Dr. Persinger's tests suggest that carefully programmed electromagnetic frequencies can tap into individual brains and influence people's emotions. The cognitive processes of the human brain are really quite simple. And if you understand how they work, you can make entire populations think and decide uh, the manner in which you wish. Many experts are skeptical of such an Orwellian scenario, but Persinger thinks the implications are chillingly real. Suppose you generate a field that produces fear, fundamental fear, in large numbers of people. And then, over the television, more traditional ways, you say, the reason we're having this fear is because of this particular group. And now you start to move the population believing in a direction that you wish. To influence 250 million people, the equivalent of the entire population of the United States, may not be that difficult. According to Dr. Persinger, we already have the technology, satellites and television, and radio transmitters. Mind control may already be happening. <laughs>